In this video, we are going to start the introduction to minimal APIs with ASP.NET Core 8 course. My name is Felipe Gavilan and the idea of this course is to learn the basics of minimal APIs. We'll learn how to create endpoints, connect to a database using Entity Framework Core, doing pagination, error handling, create a user system, among other things. This is a free course. However, if you want to learn more, you can get my minimal APIs course on Udemy. You can find a link in the description of this video. In this first video, we are going to create our minimal API, we are going to explore the files, and we are going to create our first endpoint. So, let's get started. I'm going to assume that you already have .NET 8 installed and Visual Studio 2022. So let's come here, let's go to create a new project. I'll choose a template web API, double click. I'll call it minimal APIs YouTube ENG. And by the way, you can find the code of this course in the GitHub link in the description of this video. So let's click on next. Of course, we're going to choose .NET 8, configure HTTPS. We're not going to enable open API, nor we're going to use controllers because we want to use minimal APIs. And we're going to click on create. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is to press Ctrl F5 to run my application, just to see that everything works. And we're here in Google Chrome. And as you can see, we have this JSON response on the screen. We have our URL, localhost 7019 weather forecast. This port that you have here will be different in your case. But what's important is that this is working. We have a response here. Now, if by any chance you don't have this JSON document in this pretty manner, you can come to extensions and install the JSON viewer extension in Google Chrome. But how does this work? Why do we get this response? Let's go to the program class to see this. Let's come back to Visual Studio and let's go to the Solution Explorer and let's go to the program class. And we're going to see that here we have this file which we're going to study in a few minutes. But for now, what I want to see is that we have this app map get, which basically allows me to define an endpoint which is going to respond to an HTTP get request. As you can see, it says map get, get comes from an HTTP get request. And don't worry, we're going to see the different kinds of HTTP requests later in this course. But what this does is to define that if we do a GET request to weather forecast, which is the same URL that we have here, weather forecast, then we want to execute this handler, this handler that we have here. So this function is going to get executed when we execute an HTTP GET request to this weather forecast route. And what does this handler does? It creates an enumerable of five elements and then do a projection using link queue then for each of those five elements, it instantiates a new weather forecast record, which is a record that we have here, which has a date, temperature, summary, and also a temperature in Fahrenheit. So as you can see here, we're passing those values, date, a random temperature, and a random summary. And the summary comes from this array of strings that we have here. And in the end, we transform those five weather forecasts into an array, and we return that. And that is what we have here, we have an array of one, two, three, four, five instances of the weather forecast record. And you can see that we can manipulate this if, for example, instead of five, we write here 10, so that now we have 10 instances of the weather forecast record. Control GB to recompile my application, and I will come here and I'll press enter to refresh. And now we can see that we have more than five instances of my weather forecast record. So let's come back here. And basically that is how we define an endpoint in a minimal APIs project. But let's come back a little bit. Let's come back here to the Solution Explorer because I want to explain you what these files are doing. What are these files? The first one that we want to see is this one, which is the project. A project is a group of files that are going to be compiled into something that can be used. For example, a project can be a web API, a mobile application, a desktop application, a console application but it can also be a class library. A class library is a project that helps us share code between different projects. Now, something that I want to show you is that if I right click on here and I go to open folder in File Explorer and looking for this, we can find the result of that compilation process I just mentioned. All right, so here we are. As you can see, we have our program file here, but if we come to Bing, which comes from binaries, debug, net 8 here we have the result of the compilation process which as you can see is a dll file and also we have an executable but basically the idea is that a project gets compiled into a dll and an executable in the case of a minimal web api and as you can see the name of this file is the name of the project is minimal apis youtube eng 
Now, what is this file that we have here? Let me double click here. This file is called Minimal APIs YouTube ENG .csproj. This file contains essential configurations about our project. For example, that it is a web project, that it is using .NET 8, that we are using non-nullable reference types, which helps us avoid silly errors when dealing with types that could have a null value, and also implicit usings are enabled to indicate that we will have implicit using directive in our c files. Also here, in the future, we are going to have Nugget packages. Remember that we said that we can have class libraries that allows us to share code between projects. Well, a Nugget package is basically a library that we can download from the internet so that we can reuse code made by others. Throughout the course, we are going to install several Nugget packages. Now let's come back to the Solution Explorer. By the way, the Solution Explorer allows you to navigate through the files of your solution. And speaking of solution, we have here above the project this solution. The solution is simply a set of related projects. For example, we can have a solution that could be an accounting software, which could have, for example, a project representing a web API, another project representing a website, for example, with Angular, then another project that could be a mobile app, also class libraries, which are projects themselves, to share common code between our projects and so on. So the solution allows us to organize our projects, to group them when they are related to each other. Another file that we have here is here in properties, we have this launch settings JSON file. In this, we place configurations regarding the launching of our application. It is important to note that these configurations are only for the development environment. That is, we only use them in Visual Studio. In production, this file is not used. As you can see here, we have IIS settings because we can use either IIS or Kestrel to run our application. The main difference is that IIS runs only on Windows and Kestrel is multi-platform. Now, something that IIS has that Kestrel doesn't have is Windows authentication. But in our case, we don't need that, so we're going to use Kestrel. Below these IIS settings, we have profiles. The profiles determine the set of configurations that you're going to use when launching your application. We have HTTP, HTTPS, and IIS Express. In our case, we're going to be using HTTPS, and we know that because we have HTTPS here. If we click on here, you can see that we have HTTP, HTTPS, and IIS Express, which are our profiles. So for example, here we have launch browser, which means that when we run our application, we're going to launch our default browser, which in our case is Google Chrome. And we also have launch URL weather forecast. And that explains why when I run my application, it automatically came here to weather forecast because of this configuration that we have here. Also here we define the port that we're going to use like 7019, which is exactly this port that we have here. So if you want to, you can change the port here. Also, we have environment variables, which we're going to see in a few minutes. But basically, environment variables allows us to have data that we can consult from our application so that we don't have that data hard-coded in our application. I don't really want to be launching the browser when running my application because we're going to be using the HTTP file in order to make HTTP requests to our web API. So we're going to put here false. And let me save. And now another file that I want you to see is the app settings JSON and the app settings .development .json. These are examples of configuration providers. A configuration provider is a data source that our application can use for quick access to configuration data. These types of files are important because they help us avoid having hard-coded configuration data in the c code. Let me double click on here so that you can see that this is a simple JSON file. A classic example is the connection string. The connection string contains the information necessary to access the application's database. However, it often happens that we have several databases, one per environment. When we talk about environment, we refer to the different places where we will run our application. For example, we may want to run our application in a development environment, and we will have then a development database. Also, we might have a production environment. And of course, we want to have a production database. The question is, how to have both connection strings in such a way that we use the correct one depending on the environment in which we're running the application. Well, that's what configuration providers are for. For example, I can write here message and I can write here we are in the production environment. 
Notice, please, that, and let me copy this. Notice, please, that we are in the app settings JSON file, which is a configuration provider we can use in production. If we come to the solution explorer and we come to app settings development JSON, as its name implies, we are going to use this configuration provider in development. So in here, I will write development environment. So the idea is that we're going to be able to display a message depending on in which environment we're running our application. We're going to see that in a few minutes. But how do we determine in which environment we're running our application? Well, for that, we can use an environment variable like the one we saw in the launch setting JSON file. Here we can see that we have SPNet Core environment, we have development, or we could have production. And with this, we're indicating that we're running in production or in development. So in this way, with this simple change, we can use either the app settings JSON file or the app settings development JSON file. Again, we're going to see a test of that in a few minutes. But before that, I want to come to the solution explorer because I want to see yet another file, which is called the HTTP file. This file allows us to make HTTP requests to our web API from here, from Visual Studio, without having to leave in our development environment. So what we're going to do is that I like to put this here. I like to put this here. And I like to write a comment like weather forecast. This separator allows us to have multiple requests in a single file. So we have to separate requests with this separator that we have here. So here we have a variable which contains the URL of our application. And then here I write get because I want to do a get request to this URL a slash weather forecast, which if you remember is the route that we have in the endpoint that we just saw a few minutes ago here, this weather forecast is this one. And we have accept application JSON indicating that we want to use JSON, which is the default format that we use in minimal APIs. So let me click on send request. We are running our application. By the way, I have this running here. Remember that we were running our application a few minutes ago. So if you get an error here, just press Control F5 to run your application. But in my case, I have the response here, as you can see. So that is why. I set this as false because we were going to use the HTTP files to make our tests. Now, finally, the final file that we want to see today is the program class. Let's come up here and let's see that we have this first line of code. This allows us to configure our web application. This function that we have here perform the basic configurations of ASP.NET Core. For example, where does it say that we want to use this app settings and app settings development JSON file? Well, that is handled here in this create builder function. So that is handled for us. After that, we have add services to the container. In SP.NET Core, services are classes that we can use through the inversion of control container, which is the container that this message is referring to. So the idea is that we can centralize the instantiation of our classes in this container so that our application becomes more maintainable because if we want to change something about the instantiation of a class, we can change it in a single place and that change is going to be propagated throughout our whole application. This allows us to avoid having repetitive code. So we can define the services between this bar builder and between this bar add that we have here. So in this zone, after that, we have the app builder build, which builds our application. And then after this, we have configured the HTTP request pipeline or middlewares. Middleware defines the action we want to execute every time an HTTP request is received by our application. This is something that we're going to study more in the future. But basically here we can define if we want to use authorization or not, if we want to use authentication or not, if we want to use cache or not, if we want to serve static files, and so on. That can be defined through middlewares that we can put here. An example of a middleware, as we just saw a few minutes ago, is this app map get, which allows us to intercept an HTTP GET request that's done to this route that we have here, to this weather forecast route that we have here. And from here, we can return a response. So again, this is an example of a middleware. And then we have this app run, which actually runs our web API. The last example we are going to see today is the example related to this message that we have here. We want to display either this message or this message, depending on if we are on production or in development. So we're going to create an endpoint for that. So let's come here. We want to create an endpoint that is going to respond to an HTTP GET request. So we're going to say app 
map get, all right. What is going to be the route? Well, we can say message, for example, it can be whatever string we want here, then comma, the handler, what are we going to do? What are we going to return? In my case, I just want to return a simple string. So first I will say something. This is something that we're going to change in just a minute. But how can we get this message that we have here? Well, there is a simple technique. For that, I can say bar message equal to builder, which comes from this builder that we have here. So builder dot configuration, because we want to consult a configuration provider dot get value. I want to get a value, which is of type string. And the key of that value is message. So I want to get the value that we have in this key that we have here, which is going to be this value. All right. So let's see that. Now, of course, let me return this here. When I do this notation, I'm basically saying just return this string that we have here. If I wanted to make a longer handler, I can use a squiggly brackets like we have here. But in my case, I can just return this string that we have in this variable. All right. So I can press control F5 or just control Shift B because I'm already running the application. And now I can come to the HTTP file and I want to write here app settings example message all right then i want to copy this i will just copy this let me make some space let me paste this here but i want to write here message this message comes from the route that i defined here this message that we have here all right so i can send a request and let's see that we have we are in the development environment all right so we're returning this message that we have in the app setting development JSON file because we are in the development environment. If we come to the launch settings JSON and we change this SPNet core environment variable, uh, please make sure to do that in the HTTPS profile because that is the profile that we're using. I want to change this to production control F5. Let's come back here to the HTTP file, send request. And you're going to see that now we have, we are in the production environment. So as you can see, indeed, depending on in which environment we're running our application, we either receive, we are in production or we are in development because depending on the environment we are, we use a different configuration provider, either upset is JSON or upset in development JSON. All right, that's it for this video. Today we learned how to create a minimal API project. We saw that a solution is a set of projects and that a project is a group of files that we can compile into an assembly which is a DLL that we can use as a web application or desktop application, mobile application, and so on. We saw that the launch settings JSON file helps us configure how we want to run our application. This works in Visual Studio. App settings are examples of configuration providers, which help us avoid having hard-coded data in our application. In the program class, we define our services and middlewares. We created our own endpoint to return a simple string, and we did a test from the HTTP file. If you want to learn more about minimal APIs, you can purchase my Udemy course today. You can find a link with a discount in the description of this video. Thank you.